Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I've always told you that in politics, there are only two constants. The first constant in politics is normally interest. As long as the interest of politicians can converge, they will always work together. And that's why I have never ruled out the possibility, for example, of Ray Dinga working with William Ruto again. And the second constant in politics is normally betrayal. <laughs> Earlier today, Raila Odinga was actually shocked. Raila Odinga had attended the burial ceremony of the former nominated senator, Good Liver Omonde, in Kakamega. And Rashid Echesa, who is a former cabinet secretary and a close ally of William Samoy Arapruto, Shocked Raila Amolo Dinga by naming ODM MPs who are betraying Raila Odinga and meeting with William Ruto at night and even receiving money from William Ruto. In this video, I want us to talk about the ODM MPs who are meeting William Ruto at night. First of all, let us begin the video by listening to Rashid Echesa. My brother former Prime Minister, to thank you so plenty for creating time to come here to mourn with us here. We don't take it for granted. Na vile vile, nataka niambe viongozu wote wale mmekuta hapa kutoka Nairobi pembe zote za ichi. Kwa shukuru sana kwa kuja hapa kusimama na sisi kwa kulea kifo cha mama yetu God deliver. Mana bevbo kolera, nende matungu, jameni, Poleni sana. Na mwisho kabisa, nini mnajua mama God deliver ni mwana siyasa. Na mimi, hui mama God deliver melala hapa na mimi, na viongozi wengine, ata rais William Ruto, na msalia, wote, sisi wote, ni products za huyu mze Raila Moloding. Huyu mze huyu, Ndiyo mementa sisi wote. Mimi ni kianza kushika microphone hata nilikuwa sujui kuongea mbele ya watu. Lakini huyu mzame keti hapa. Ndiyo metumenta sisi wote. Na sisi tunamweshimu kama mzee katika tefaletu la inchi ya Kenya. Na hata hivyo. Havana befu abawanga. Mimi unajua sa zingine. Mi am one person. Nasema vile maneno hiko. Maneno ya kuenda lugumba lugumba. Mimi I don't know. Mimi nimeshangaa na mimi nataka nikwambie baba leo if indeed it were meant that one time you will be the president of the republic of Kenya i want to assure you it will come to pass however however baba I want to tell you this kwa sababu siasa ni kama kucheza mpira Na uwezi enda na wachezaji kucheza mpira wachezaji wenye hawajijui hawajitambui hawajui wanacheza na namba gani Mimi nashangaa nashangaa sana kwa sababu mi am one person today mimi niko na serikali kwa, kwa leo lakini kesho nikiamua ya kwamba nataka kufanya eh Nisema na sasa Mimi nimeshanga. Ndugu yangu huyu mjumbe wa Butere, Tundu Mwale. Hata wiki haijaisha. Tumewaona kwa TV wakisema tulikuwa na mheshimiwa wa rais anasema amesema. Na wakapewa milioni moja moja. Mbona hiyo inakuja kusema hapa? to tell you today if these are the kind of leaders you will go with them in 2027 I want to show you Baba Mbani Mwango Itaharibika kwa hivyo Baba mimi na Mbani Kwambi iko wachazaji wazuri hapa ndani tafuta wachazaji wazuri au kwa nao ni matapeli wanakutumia tu kupata certificate na kupata vitu zao Alafu wanenda kufanya uchurusha wa siyasa Na hiyo mba siyasa sisi tumekataa Sisi tunasema Tukiwa serekali
serikali we want a strong opposition ambayo ita check government there's no way today you purport to be in government in the morning in the evening uko na na na, 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 na opposition politics is a thin line you are either in opposition nor in the government so there's no way unakuja hapo na tuambia mwambie Ruto wewe ulikuwa na yeye last week what did you tell him what did you tell him and because in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence and that everything in politics is normally well planned well scripted and executed to achieve specific political objectives i want us to look at the main objectives which rashid echesa wanted to achieve by leaking the details to raila amolo odinga before we do that for those who are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to dive in. First of all, let us understand Kakamega County. Kakamega County is the second largest voting block in the Republic of Kenya. I think after, um, is it the third? After Nairobi and uh, Kiambu. Kakamega County. During the 2022 general election, William Ruto, working very closely with Ofulache Bukati, engineered the postponement of the gubernatorial elections in two counties. Kakamega County and Mombasa County. They did that to suppress the voter turnout in those two counties. Why were they doing that? The truth of the matter is that politics is a game of numbers. In the last general election, Kakamega County had close to, to 900,000 registered voters. I think there were 800 and some, something registered voters. When IBC results were announced, Renu Dinga got 360,000 votes. William Ruto got 140 votes. If you add the totals, that total to around um, 500,000 votes out of 900 which means close to almost half of the registered voters in Kakamega never turned out but let us not get into that let us look at the constituencies because Rashid Echesa is telling Raila Odinga and he named them that some of the MPs from Kakamega are actually meeting with William Ruto at night Kakamega County has 12 constituencies out of those 12 constituencies, in the last election, ODM party won nine of them. NC party won two, but with a very narrow margin and probably because of the way ODM conducted itself. DAP Kenya also won one through PK Salasia. Remember, PK Salasia was initially running on ODM ticket, but it was clear he was going to be locked out. And that's how he shifted to <laughs> that Kenya, which was part of Azimio. So you can easily conclude that if ODM had plotted well, probably all members of parliament in Kakamega would have been elected on the ticket. The governor was elected on ODM ticket, the senator was elected on UDA, and the women rep was elected on ODM ticket. And that's why Kakamega County is significant. So the question is, why would ODM MPs from Kakamega meet with William Ruto at night and even take money. There are a few facts that we also need to know about the ODM MPs from Kakamega. Number one, most of those ODM MPs from Kakamega County were actually sponsored by none other than Francis Atuli. By that time, Francis Atuli was working very closely with Raila Odinga and William Ruto. I mean, with Raila Odinga and Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. The truth is, Atuli sponsored most of these MPs. I remember even in 2017, he sponsored someone like Malala. Number two, most of these Kakamega MPs are actually beneficiaries of direct ticket. They were never subjected to the nomination. Remember, some of them were previously in, in ANC party and they understood because they were previously in ODM. Then ODM rigged them out in 2017. They, con they, they contested on ANC, which was an affiliate of... Uh, of uh, NASA at that time, and they ended up winning. 
So when Museveni and Mudavadi went to the other party, they knew there was there was no way they were going to win through UDA party or through NC party as long as they were out of Azimio. So most of them then negotiated and they were issued with direct ticket because it was a big catch. Having, let's say, six NC MPs defecting to ODM party was a big deal for perception. So they were given direct ticket. The other thing that we need to know is that Ray Odinga was actually keen on increasing his numbers in Kakamega because in the last election, the previous election, which was now 2017, ODM won the presidential, but majority of MPs went to ODM, I mean, went to NC party because of the way the nominations were conducted. The other fact that we need to know is that most of these ODM MPs from Kakamega actually rode on ODM popularity. And <laughs> that, that means most of them might not have necessarily be believers of Raila Amolo Odinga. But the question is, why would Rashid Echesa make such kind of revelation in a funeral in Kakamega, in the presence of Raila Odinga, and in the presence of the very the same same MPs? That's exactly what I want us to, to analyze in this video. First of all, in my view, if you ask me, what Rashid Echesa stated, if it's true, it means William Ruto is keen on playing the politics of money. He's buying MPs. The MPs from Nyanza were bought, and of course they're not supporting William Ruto. What I don't understand is why some of these MPs from the Lian Nation would meet William Ruto at night or secretly pick the money, but they don't feel confident enough to go to the ground and advocate for the policies or even oppose Raila Odinga the way most of the Luo MPs were doing. So, in my view, Raila Odinga and Azimio must be prepared for the possibility that William Ruto and his team will buy more MPs. And this is how it, it begins. You know, normally what happens, because I remember so well when uh, in 2017, because 2017 I was keenly following the happenings within ODM party. You know, I, I knew whatever was happening. William Ruto managed to win the heart of someone like Aisha Jumwa in a very simple way. She would give, I mean, he would give Aisha Jumwa 300,000 per, per week to go to the ground because he was the deputy president. Then she would give Aisha Jomwa roads to go and construct. Then you get the const contractor. That's how Aisha Jomwa went because in ODM you are in opposition. <laughs> so this is how it begins. And I suspect if Raila Odinga will not really go to the ground and consolidate and have the, the public pile pressure on them, most of these MPs are going to go. So it's clear that William Ruto is planning to pump money on ODM MPs. Number two, it's also about the politics of betrayal. And it's common. Politics of betrayal is part and parcel of the game. So if you look at these nine MPs, ODM MPs, probably if you even add the Dap Kenya guy, Salasia, He's the only guy who, is, who now believes very strongly on Raila Odinga. Of course, I know someone like Kamala, whose house was destroyed the other day. Why do you think that house was destroyed? Probably because there were money which exchanged hands, but they, because the ground is hostile, he can't do the way these guys want. So it's being taught a lesson. Those are the realities of politics. That's how politics plays out in this, in this country. Not even in this country, in the whole world. You, you betray someone. So there is that element of politics of betrayal. So Ruto feels he was betrayed. House down. The MP feels, okay, Raila Odinga, we won, but even without Raila Odinga, we can still win. Number three, it also reinforces the theory that majority of members of parliament who are elected on ODM ticket just used ODM as their vehicle for winning the seats. Immediately they, they won the seats, then that narrative now changes. That's why some of them would tell you that they were elected to serve the people. While when they were campaigning, they were campaigning that they, they want to be elected on ODM ticket so that they can defend ODM as political party and even Raila Odinga for that particular matter.
So the truth is, most of the ODM MPs who are elected, or who are elected, are actually just there. They used the ODM party just as a vehicle to win the seats. Number four, the questions about the reward system in ODM party. You can be rest assured that ODM diehard will never betray Raila Odinga. There are several of them. Some have lost, but they are still with Raila Odinga. That's the fact. I can give you in Mombasa, the former is it Kisaruni MP, Rashid Bedzema. He was defeated, just relaxed, came back. Some of them, there's another member of parliament, I think the Mwanyoha guy, was defeated, still stuck with ODM party. But there are some who just win, they lose, because someone from nowhere came. So the, the reward system in ODM party is what is bringing these kind of things. You have people who don't believe in ODM party, you have people who don't believe in ODM ideology, you give them the ticket. They win the seat. What do you expect? These are the people who can actually sneak at night, get money, come back, attend your event, laugh with you. The same night, they go and stay at state house, then reveal the details. And lastly, it's something which is also very important. That based on what we are seeing, ODM as political party must strengthen itself. And as much as they are strengthening themselves, they must start thinking on how they can conduct free, fair, and credible party nominations. And if that cannot happen, they, they must come up with a strategy on how they can identify their candidates. Either scientific, but it has to be real. And it has to target members. In fact, I've always proposed to ODA party that there is no need of them just having everybody on board. Let them have members. ODM members are known. If you go to ODM county office today and you tell them that, you know, there's this guy who is uh, who want to contest, they'll tell you, okay, we need to wait. Okay, that's not our guy. So there's need for the ODM to confine the nominations to members alone. So that the people who are carrying the burden, like for example, elections were, were concluded last year. So from now until the next election, there are people who will be busy with the ODM party using their resources to, to, to attend rallies, to fuel their vehicles, to promote, to print I mean, uh, materials for ODM party. Then when the nominations will come, someone will come from nowhere who was hiding somewhere with money, throw it. So there is need for ODM nominations. That's the only way to secure the future of that party. I don't know what to think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.